welcome to our weekly Forex forecast. And today we are looking at week of December 10th to the 14th here. Before we get started here, just a quick disclaimer. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. We'll start off as usual by taking a look at our Forex factory calendar here. And let's see what we have um, in store. So we'll take a look at this week. So before we dive into the calendar, calendar just um, a couple of uh, overarching kind of themes. Uh, US and, uh, US and uh, China had trade talks. And as a result of that, they have decided to do a 90 day sort of cooling off period here where they will not put sanctions on each other. So that's, um, that was good for the markets, but then markets, the equity markets have, um, have been weakening and we have heard talk about, or we have seen that the, the yield curves are inverting, which is usually shows that a recession may be coming our way. So um, just to, just be aware of that and keep an eye on your Bloomberg and Reuters and stuff to um, to go and take a look at these things. I think it's very important to um, go through those news sources. Um, all right. So in terms of our news that's coming up Monday, we have GDP numbers for. Uh, British pound here and manufacturing production month over month numbers. So that will be important for um, For our British pound here average earnings index. This one is also very important. This is kind of like the non-farm payrolls uh, That we had last week for US. This is similar. So here not only are we looking at the employment numbers what the employment rate or the unemployment rate is at but we're also looking at average earnings index So if average earnings uh, go down, that would be bad. So if they go up, that would be positive for British pound. And then we have PPI numbers here. That would be important. Very, very important thing coming up here. Uh, Parliament Brexit vote. So last week we heard that um, if uh, Prime Minister Theresa May's, um, she does not get the Parliament support for the current deal, um, then they could have a second referendum again. So just um, we'll have to look at this one, keep an eye on this because uh, things can change very, very rapidly uh, with any news that comes around Brexit. So make sure you're keeping an eye on your news feed. Um, now we are likely to see a big move if um, once this kind of this board gets announced. So just be aware of that if you're trading any pound crosses, this is something that we have to pay attention to for that. And then we have CPI and core CPI numbers here for US. This is the inflation number and will be important because we have seen that um, uh, President Trump was putting pressure on the Fed not to raise rates and Fed has actually just come back and changed their uh, change the commentary a little bit because before they were saying they will do uh, rate hikes in 2018 and 2019 and now that language is changing a little bit and they are expressing um, they're saying basically that the rate is kind of at that neutral level and we may not have to or they may not have to do as many uh, interest rate uh, rises as they were as they were going to do before so um, if the inflation number is um, is negative it will be uh, bad for the US dollar so we have to keep that in mind because that will put further pressure on Fed not to raise rates and overall it will be negative for the US dollar positive for um, so any US crosses will likely go up if the number comes out lower than expected here uh, we also have Swiss National Bank monetary policy statement um, as well as their interest rates not expecting the interest rate to change but again anything that gets said in press conference um, what the commentary is that can make a difference. Now we do have Euro, um, our financing rate, again, interest rate here, and we have ECB press conference here. Again, not looking for an interest rate hike at this point, but 
what everybody will be watching ECB for would be what their thoughts are for 2019 and 2020, how they see the economy. So if the comments are positive in terms of the economic growth and jobs, prospects, and that type of stuff, so this will be positive for Euro. But if they express concern, concerns over trade wars or how the economy is doing or how the markets are doing, that type of stuff can be negative for Euro because that would mean that ECB is not interested in raising rates or they may kind of wait before they raise rates. So before ECB had said that in 2019, summer of 2019, that's kind of when they will start looking at raising interest rates. So now that we are at end of 2018, any commentary for future interest rate hikes will be very important. And this is where, this is what will make a difference because currently they're not raising rates, but it will all be about when they will start raising rates. And if they talk about, any talk about raising interest rates um, that is considered positive will be uh, bullish for Euro. Other than that, on Friday here, we have PMI numbers out of the Eurozone and retail sales numbers for the US. Again, this, will, uh, this is an important number that we uh, watch for, so it will have an impact on the US dollar. So we have a couple of central banks on the tab, and anytime there are central bankers speaking or central bank news coming out, it becomes very important. All right, so let's move on to our charts here, and we'll start off with our euro here. So based on the weekly, we see that euro has been trading in this range here for several weeks now. It hasn't been able to break below this 1200 level here, and it's right in the middle of the range. So the weekly close here was bullish, but if we take a look here, we are sort of into this resistance level here. So we have these pins right over here. And if we go all the way to the back here, there is resistance there as well. So that could uh, prove to be problematic. So if price is able to go above this 1.1450 level, then chances are it will go higher. And then we are looking at basically the top of the, um, the range here that this price has been trading in, 1500 and potentially higher into 1600. So for now, this is, um, this is bullish, but again, it's very important to see if price can break this 1.1450 level. And if it does, then I would look for a move higher. Otherwise, a price could just go sideways here, especially with ECB coming up. So that's our euro. So it's uh, bullish for now. And in terms of British pound here, we see the price is kind of, uh, it's compressing. Um, the candlesticks here are not very strong. So if you take a look at these, see these candlesticks, how small they are? It just, it almost looks like price is ready to turn. But again, because we have Brexit vote and we have Brexit news and stuff, we just have to be mindful of that because it can make, it can change things. However, um, with having said that, the did, sorry, the weekly candle here is neutral. It's similar to what we had on Euro last week. So last week, Euro was neutral. And generally, when we get a neutral candle, of course, it can go either way. But if you have had a bit of a downtrend, then um, things can uh, change at that point. So keep that in mind here. Uh, sorry here, my computer is starting to show messages. Okay, so uh, same thing here for pound US dollar here as well. We have, um, we have, uh, what do you call it? Sorry, indecision candle here. And from here, if it does not break below the support here, chances are it will turn around and we can look at it going higher. So keep that in mind. But right now, we're not at that point. We have to wait for it to turn. So what I would be looking for here on a shorter time frame would be a retest of the bottom here. And if price fails to go below, then I'd be looking for a move like that back into this little range that it has been trading in. So 1.2680 is an important level to watch because this is our previous support here 
price wasn't able to break the support first time, second time, third time, and this is the fourth test of the support. And if it doesn't break it, chances are it will turn. So right now, uh, the bias is neutral for pound dollar. Aussie dollar here, this one has shifted from last week. And um, this was bullish last week. So it went up into the previous resistance level here. And from then, we have seen a sharp decrease for um, in Australian dollar here. Now, part of the reason also was because negative news came out for Australian dollar. And hence, we have seen this big drop. Now, after this drop, um, so the bias is bullish now with this big bearish engulfing candle here. But be mindful of a pullback because when we get such big drops here or such big moves, generally there are pullbacks. So I would look for a pullback into 72. Let's take a quick peek here. Um, so looking at potential pullback into 0 0.7260-ish area and then a further move to the downside. So bias here is bearish. Now be careful with this type of move because that can happen. We can get a deeper pullback, but bias is bearish here for Aussie dollar and I'm looking for it to drop further. First target is 0 0.7140 level and then looking at 0 0.7080, the bearish bias for Aussie uh, dollar here. New Zealand dollar here, we have seen price drop. So we do have a bearish um, candle close here on the weekly. Now we are into support here. So we have to be careful with this one. We have to make sure that price actually breaks the support here. Otherwise it could turn around. So the bias is bearish, but it's important for it to break through and then do one of these and potentially uh, further move to the downside. So my bias on New Zealand dollar is also bearish and looking for price to drop further. First target would be 0 0.6750. Second target, 0 0.6680 level. So bearish bias for New Zealand dollar as well. Um, now, having said that, what we had seen previously was that Euro, so the risk currencies, Euro, um, and pound were dropping and commodity currencies, our Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, they were going up. And that had created this big move in pound, New Zealand, Euro, New Zealand, Euro, Aussie, that type of stuff. Now that things are turning, there may be um, room for that move to reverse itself or show pullbacks. So just keep that in mind as we are seeing a disparity between commodity currencies and risk currencies right now. So for dollar cat here, um, dollar cat, couple of different things that influenced the move last week. One was Bank of Canada essentially came out and said that they're going to watch the data and not going to uh, just you know continue doing interest rate hikes. So that was negative for dollar cat um, or Canadian dollar, sorry, and it pushed the dollar cat up. And then we had positive uh, news or data come out which was then positive for Canadian dollar, which pushed dollar CAD down. And as a result, we have this large pin on top, but there's still bullishness in this candle. So it could go up further to retest the high once again. So bias is bullish, but I'm really looking for a retest here and see how price reacts at 1.3440 or 50 level there, because if it does not go through it, it could reverse there. So there may be an opportunity at that point. So for now, the bias is bullish, but I'm looking for a reaction at 1.3450 level. <clears throat> the next one here is our Euro pound. Euro pound is bullish. Um, we had a big bullish candle here, and since then, looks like it wants to move higher here. Next target would be 0 0.9020 level. So this is looking bullish here. And if it gets past that, then we are looking at 0 0.9100. But for now, uh, 0 0.9020 will be the first target, and 0 0.9100 second target. So bias is bullish for euro pound. Euro Swiss franc here, this one is a bearish. We had a, 
an indecision candle. So it went up after that, but ran into resistance there and has stayed. This is why support and resistance levels are important to watch because the reaction at these levels can change direction of the market. So with this one, bias is bearish right now, looking for it to draw further. 1.1 to 60 will be the first target, which is just about there. And then we're looking at 1.1 to 20 and potentially lower into 1.1180 level. So right now, bias is bearish for Euro Swiss franc. Pound Swiss franc is looking similar here as well. We have seen this drop. So looking for price to drop further. Do watch out for pullbacks here. But the next target that I would be looking for would be 1.2500. And then below that, we have 1.2350. So bias is bearish here for pound Swiss franc as well. Dollar Swiss franc also looking bearish here. Price wasn't able to go through this resistance and has reacted and dropped from there. So this is looking bearish, looking for it to drop further. First target would be 0 0.9850 level and then potentially into uh, 0 0.9792, so 9800. So bearish bias for dollar Swiss franc. Yen crosses here. Um, this one's looking bearish. Uh, we are into support. So we are into support right there. Uh, for it to continue further, we'll have to see a break of that support. But the bias is bearish and looking for it to drop further, 139.80, which is the bottom, bottom of this candle here. That will be our target to the downside. So bearish bias for pound yen. Euro yen here, this one is sort of range bound at the moment. See how it's just sitting in that range, hasn't been able to really break through it. It just sat here for a while. And um, based, on, based on this, it's still range bound here. So we have a smaller range between 129.30 to 127.50 here, and a larger range between 130 and um, we have 126.50. So basically at this point, this is range bound, so it can go either way. We'll have to just wait and see where it wants to go. For now, it's bouncing between the two levels here. We have bearishness in it, so I will look for a retest of the low once again, and how price reacts at the bottom will basically tell us how to, uh, what to do with this pair. So for now, bias is neutral, and it's looking range bound to me. Dollar yen here, this one is bearish. We have seen price bounce off of the high here, could not break through the resistance. And um, now we have uh, a bearish candle close for the weekly. So we have a, basically a triple top here. So looking for it to drop 111.50 will be the first target. And then we are looking at um, 110, 110.20 level. So bias is bearish for dollar yen as well. Aussie yen here, oops. Um, this is again bearish and it has followed basically the same move or similar move to our Aussie dollar. Price went into resistance here and then just dropped after that. Now bias is bearish, looking for it to drop further. First target is 80.50, which is not that far, uh, but looking for it to come into this 79.00 level. So bearish bias for Aussie yen as well. And our New Zealand yen, this one is looking bearish as well. So looking for it to drop further here. And the move that I would anticipate would be something like this. Looking for it to get into this 76.20 level, which is the base of this candle and then into um, that level there. So let me just move my line. Okay, so first target is 76.20, second target 75.50. So bearish bias for New Zealand yen as well. CAD yen here, this one, this was the big uh, inefficient move from based on the data there. But this is looking bearish here. It has moved lower. So with this one, I would look for price to drop further. Bias is bearish. 
and looking for it to retest the low once again. That will be the first target, 83.60 level. And after that, if it does continue uh, lower than 8,300 and then potentially 8,220. So bias is bearish here for CAD yen as well. Um, all right, so let's take a look at some commodities now. We'll make our way over to gold. Gold is looking bullish. We have finally broken above that uh, resistance over here. Um, so this is looking bullish. So watch out for a retest here. Um, and then I'm looking for a further move to the upside here. Now there is some support resistance in the middle here that we'll have to watch out for about there. It's almost into that area right now. So for this one, bias is bullish. That's a nice break here out of this um, resistance area. And target would be 1261 uh, for our gold here. So bullish for gold. Oil is basically trading in a range right now. After that huge drop here in oil, we are right into this and this is why dollar cad has gone up as well or partly um why dollar cad has gone up because oil has been dropping and bank of canada is concerned about prices of oil and hence they are um, not very bullish in terms of raising rates at this point so what we see here is a range bound move it's been arranging in this um area for the last several days here so last couple of weeks basically price opened and closed at exactly the same level and we have these dojis in place so with that now uh, we'll have to just wait and see which way it goes because these are just um, indecision candles we may see a move like that that's kind of what i would look for basically i'm looking for a range bound move here as well um, if price goes up, I would look at a 54.80 level for a reaction. If it drops, I would look for 49.65 for a reaction. And we'll just have to wait before price either goes above this level or breaks down below. And then there are further levels that we can mark here. But for now, it is looking range bound. Copper here is also been range bound here. We do have a bearish candle close for the week. And as we can see for several weeks here, copper is just uh, range bound. So looking for price to drop further, 2.63 will be the target, which is the base of this, uh, the bottom of this range here. So bear, bearish bias for copper here. And let's take a look at uh, silver, and we'll, then we'll take a look at Bitcoin. Silver here has also gone up, so we have seen a bullish move here for silver. It bounced off of the low, not quite at the top of this range, so we have a bullish candle close, looking for it to go higher here into uh, 14.91, so $15 mark. So bullish bias here for silver. Bitcoin, Bitcoin has been dropping and a few weeks ago we had talked about how it was consolidating back here for several days or a few weeks actually and we were looking for a big um, move in uh, Bitcoin. Didn't know at that time which way it would go and since it broke down below that it has just been bearish here and still looking bearish. I don't really have all the levels. My charts don't show that, but this is still looking bearish. It was trading, it had pulled back. It was trading in this bit of a range here. Now it's gone through that. So this is still looking bearish and I will look for a further drop here. So this, this does not look um, like it's gonna go up uh, just yet. So I think we could see a further drop here back towards this 2,500 level here. So my bias is bearish for Bitcoin. And let's go through the indices real quick here. S&P 500 here from weekly perspective, that's a huge drop. 
Now, having said that though, um, as we can see, it was right into that resistance level and just could not break through. Um, but we are into support here as well. And this is the support where price has not uh, kind of gone through for several weeks now, because we're looking at weekly candles here. So again, we have to wait for it to break down first uh, before, you know, like we can say it's completely bearish, but based on the weekly candle close here, this is looking bearish. But because we are into support here, we have to be careful, just like when we were into resistance, we couldn't just go long over here because look what happened. So we can't just short it right here because we have to wait and see if it breaks down. So what I would be watching for would be uh, maybe something like this and then uh, further move to the downside. So a bit of a pullback here. And if that fails, looking for it to retest the low once again and looking for price to break through the bottom here, then do a pullback. And if it stays below, then I would look for a further move to the downside. But bias here is bearish for S&P 500, which means the yen crosses would be interesting for us to pay attention to right now. And for Nikkei here, same thing. Uh, the weekly here is looking very bearish. And I will look for price to test the low here at 207.50 level here and potentially into 20329. So bearish bias here for Nikkei as well. NASDAQ here is looking bearish again. And we see price went into this resistance level, was not able to break above. So it's looking bearish, big bearish close. But see how we had a bearish close here and then things turned around. So watch out for that. Comments make a big difference for indices. So Fed comments, President Trump's comments, these type of things we have to be more aware of these days just because there are comments that just come at us without really it being anywhere. The tweets and things like that can wreak havoc on the market. So just keep an um, keep an eye on your news feed so that you're aware of basically what's coming from various sources here. But in terms of our, this is kind of what I'm looking for, a pullback and then a further drop or a deeper pullback like that and a further drop. So I'm looking for it to retest the low. My bias is bearish and a target here would be 64.20. And if it goes through that target, then we have 6145 uh, below that. But first target would be 6420, and we'll have to see how price reacts at that level. But overall, NASDAQ is also looking bearish. And then we have um, DAX here looking quite bearish as well. This one has actually broken through here through the support. And now I will look for price to get into this area here, because we have this big candle that will likely get filled. So bias is bearish, 104.14 will be the target to the downside uh, for this. Um, okay, in just a minute, uh, okay. Let's do FTSE and then I will answer a question that just came in. Uh, FTSE here is looking bearish as well. It has broken below the support as well, just like DAX there and looking bearish. The next target here, we are almost into support. So I would look for a retest of the low in here as well. Because we've had such a big move, I will look for pullback. Um, either into 68.51 or into this level here. Uh, let me just draw an actual support line, support resistance area here. So let's see. Yeah, so we could get a pullback either in so 69.78 or into 68.50 here. So I have a look for a pullback and then a further drop. 66.50 will be the first target. And if it blows through that, then we have 64.85 area. So bearish bias for FTSE as well. Uh, 
Um, so the question that has just come in is, can I recommend a reliable news feed provider? Um, a lot of times the brokers will have a news feed. Um, I'm not a big fan of uh, most broker feeds just because they get the Reuters feed. Um, you can subscribe to Bloomberg or the one that I like is the audio feed, uh, audio feed Ransquark. Uh, provides that. So that's one option. You can just subscribe to their, their website. I think it's Ransquark. Um, and you can just do a search for that. Or um, I know fxpro.co.uk, they are a broker. Now, I don't know them. I don't have any affiliation with them. And I've heard sort of mixed reviews about them. But if you set up a demo account with them, they will give you the Ransquark uh, feed for free. So that's another option to sort of look at. Uh, those are the couple of recommendations that I would have. Again, do, you know, test it out and see how it goes. Any other questions before we wrap it up here? You're welcome, Nathaniel. Uh, there was no Friday webinar, no. There was, uh, people didn't show up, so <laughs> we didn't really have one. Um, any other question before we wrap it up here? All right, so I don't see anything else coming in. So you guys have a wonderful rest of the weekend here and a great trading week. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.